<clears throat> Welcome on back everybody to any cast yeah today I'm recording on zoom and uh, I found out that you can use avatars so I am I'm a polar bear yeah that's kind of the vibe we're going for today anyways um so <laughs> we're doing an MCU t tier list just look at all the things I haven't watched any one shot agent Carter Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Daredevil, Shield, uh, all this stuff. A couple movies I haven't watched, but mostly like the Netflix TV shows and um, whatever this one slingshot is. I've never even heard of that. Like I've heard of every other one of these shows, um, but slingshot I've never even heard of. I didn't know that this thing. I didn't. I didn't even know what this is. I just saw it pop up on Hulu sometimes. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen Hulk, the first two Thor movies, Captain Marvel, Morbius, and I will not watch Morbius. I uh, I heard it's really bad, and I have not seen the Venom movies. So, or what if? So I'm not gonna be able to do a tier list rank those. But hey, now we have all the other MCU movies and TV shows, including actually the Toby and Andrew Spider movies along with Tom's. Um, I try to put it in the canonical order or chronological based on the years. So like from Captain America, First Avenger to MOM. Uh, I think I don't I wasn't really sure on like Spider-Man Toby verse. I think that happened before Iron Man technically. And then I put Amazing Spider-Man right after like Avengers because they were made in the same year. And then I put Amazing Spider-Man 2 after Captain America because this was made in 2014 and um, Guardians was made in 2014. So we got all of this stuff. <clears throat> and let me just tell you, some of this stuff is like awful in my opinion. Like really terrible uh, shows and movies. But yeah, let's get into this podcast. All right, so everybody knows how the tier list works. I hope you guys do by this time. By now, S best. S is the best, F is the worst, and uh, let's start this. Okay, so Captain America, a first Avenger. This is a great Marvel movie. Um, I believe this is an A tier movie because it's like a giant adventure. You get to learn about uh, Captain America and just a great origin story. Uh, really amazing stuff great action sequences um really good pacing i know a lot of people hold on i'm gonna adjust my mic real quick i know that a lot of people don't actually like this movie probably i don't really know why but some people i don't think really care for captain america as a superhero and they actually like the second captain america a lot more which i think is very bizarre because I, as you'll see, don't like second Captain America movie at all. Um, I don't really know why. Uh, but anyways, okay, hopefully that sounds good. All right, I think that should. Okay, now Spider-Man, the OG Tom, or sorry, not Tom Long. <sighs> the OG with... I can't even remember his name. This is a reset. Tobey Maguire. So, this is an S-tier Marvel movie, in my opinion. It is an amazing story. It is a little bit slow. Uh, you know what, actually? I'm actually going to put it behind Captain America because, admittedly, it is a very slow-paced movie. I think, like, 30 minutes or the first, like, 50 are telling you about Peter and it's like, oh, here's how he got the spider bite. Oh, here's Uncle Ben dead type of thing, which is great. You know, back in the day when this they made this movie, movies took a lot longer amount of time to embellish a story. For example, I was watching the X-Men <clears throat> for the very first time and that was made in 2000. And in the X-Men movie, it takes them quite a while just to get to the action sequences. And there's not that much action uh, compared to like X2, 
or any other Marvel movie. It's kind of like Avengers, in my opinion, the X-Men movie, the first one. Because it's like, oh, here's Professor Xavier. Here, we're going to establish a little bit about Xavier's school, about the mutants, what the problem in the world is. We're going to kind of show you where Logan comes from and Rogue, and we're going to embellish the superpowers, that type of thing. Uh, okay, now we have Spider-2. Spider-Man 2 is amazing, in my opinion. It's really an amazing movie. It has an amazing villain. Doc Ock is insanely cool. Uh, he does kind of go to the good side in the end, but that's because he realizes, because Toby, Spider-Man, convinces uh, Doc Ock to be good, and then Doc Ock makes the ultimate sacrifice and dies as the giant orb thing is falling on him, or the giant machine. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, okay, Spider-Man 3 is an F-tier movie. You, there's not going to be, I hope there's not a lot in the F-tier, but this is truly a disgrace to superhero movies in my opinion. Um, Toby Spider-Man is one of the greatest Spider-Mans ever, in my opinion. Uh, well, I mean, there's only three, so we can't really judge off of a lot, but like, okay, not... Let me rephrase that. His movies are some of the greatest. Two and one are insanely good. And then all of a sudden, you get this movie where Toby is like really just emo y, I guess you could say. And he's like, oh, I like being bad. And it's like supposed to be an entire plot point. And it just comes off as the most cringiest thing I've ever seen in a superhero movie or like any movie whatsoever. So that is an F tier movie. The action sequences are fine, but whatever. Now we have Iron Man that is above, that is in the S tier right above Spider-Man 2. Iron Man is a gold, that's a golden superhero movie. That is how superhero movies should be made. Um, really amazing stuff. Now we have Iron Man 2. I'm going to put that right above Captain America because I believe that Iron Man 2 is actually an amazing movie, a great sequel. We get to see War Machine be built like as a character. We get to see more of Robert Downey Jr. or Iron Man and Tony, how that plays. And the villain is pretty cool, actually. Uh, Whiplash, I think, is his name. I don't remember. I can't remember. I've only seen this movie once, but it was really great from what I remember. And uh, we also get the introduction of Natasha, otherwise known as Black Widow. Now we go on to um, Avengers. Avengers is good. It's not my favorite. And I know I'm going to be getting a bunch of crap like, why do you hate the Avengers? No, I don't hate the Avengers. The movie itself is a bit outdated. I mean, it's, it's 10 years old. The effects don't. You see, the story of the Avengers movie is a little bit weird. When I went back and watched it, it was not how I remembered it. It was like, oh, here's a lot of time spent on Nick Fury building the Avengers. Kind of like the X-Men movie, like Professor Xavier. Except with the Avengers, you're stuck on a helicarrier and they're trying to interrogate Loki. And you kind of learn a little bit about the superheroes past. Whereas in the X-Men, it's like, oh no, Magneto is there with Mystique, and you gotta watch and see who's gonna, who is a uh, who, is that Mystique, or is that uh, somebody else, and then you like see all the problems the mutants face in their day-to-day -day lives, whereas with the Avengers, they're just trying to fit into society, they're not being shunned for some, from society, I don't know, it's a weird type of a, uh, deal in my opinion next up we got Sp amazing spider-man amazing spider-man is like it says in the title amazing i will put it in the i'm actually gonna put it under spider-man right there in the eighth here because i think it's a pretty realistic um superhero movie like the emotions of the character and the I guess just how Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man functions in the day-to-day -day life of being Spidey and facing all the problems uh, and some of the action sequences 
and the fact that spider-man is the menace to the police and that's like really touched on a lot i think it's really cool really cool stuff right there that they did next up we have iron man 3 this is a d no this is an f tier marvel movie in my opinion no you know what? actually i'll put it at d because <clears throat> it did set some stuff up it does go into this weird christmas type stuff where it's like oh it's christmas and uh there's like really weird cyborg people um bizarre movie i would say skip it if you're gonna go watch the mcu and you're new to it and you somehow found this podcast uh because a friend sent it to you or something i don't know um <coughs> sorry got something stuck in my throat um but iron man 3 is just like you can skip it it's not even useful now we have captain america uh winter soldier as much as I don't really care for this movie, I will put it in the B tier, actually above Avengers, because I do like Captain America, and it's his continuation of his story, but more so Bucky and um, Black Widow story. We get to see Cap like uh, function in the day-to-day -day life, and he uh, has to fight the Winter Soldier, who he's like slow. He kind of like starts slowly realizing, oh crap, that's Bucky. And we get to see Falcon come in. Um, and then Falcon, Black Widow, and Cap have to fight Bucky, who's really the Winter Soldier. And then eventually, I can't remember if this leaves it. I'm pretty sure it left on the cliffhanger of like, they gotta go find Bucky or Winter Soldier before he creates more chaos for everybody. And so that's the big thing. So yeah, it's better than um, I, or the Avengers movie, in my opinion. Spider-Man 2. Um, I'm gonna put this at the D tier, right above Iron Man 3. As much as I love the Amazing Spider-Man movie, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is really bad in my opinion like really bad um it really just focuses on him and gwen's uh romantic relationship and then electro is pretty cool and then they try to do a green goblin but any marvel fan will just tell you that's not green goblin don't even don't even just discard that part of the movie so Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, I haven't seen in forever. I remember it being pretty funny, and I remember the action being pretty cool and the villain being pretty good. Um, so I'll put it uh, right above. I'll put it above um, Amazing Spider-Man because I really do like sci-fi, and you know that was kind of like bringing Star Wars to. Um, marvel i guess you could say like it's expanding it was expanding marvel the mcu to the galaxy bringing us the guardians of the galaxy and they really went hard in for the comedy aspect of this movie so not only did it introduce us to a sci-fi element in marvel it introduced us to doing a lot more comedy which was already there before but this was even bigger Next up, we got Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is worse than the Avengers. It's not the greatest. Like, it's funny. It really is. Um, the story, like the villain, spoiler, is Star-Lord's dad, and then he dies. Because they like basically make him so powerful. They essentially make him a god, and then I think he... I think Star Wars killed him or he died because like he kind of killed himself because of the power. I couldn't remember. I couldn't tell you, but uh, it was not that great in my opinion. Next up, we got Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, this movie is like, it's better. I'm going to say it's actually better than the first Avengers and Captain America because 
it teases that maybe the X-Men were coming to the MCU. As we all know, we think everything means the X-Men coming to the MCU. When Marvel just craps on us, and they just crap on everything. And they're like, no, they're I'm never going to come to the MCU. Until we'll get to a later movie that I have a theory on how the X-Men could be introduced. But um, the story of Age of Ultron was really great. The ending was insane. It kind of set up, it set up a lot. It's almost like Civil War. Civil War set up way more than um, Age of Ultron. And I think Civil War is one of the strongest MCU movies. It set up a lot for the MCU. Um, but Age of Ultron has Ultron, of course. I kind of think he's an, he's a cool villain. He's not like the coolest. You've heard me and Isaiah talk about Ultron. Now, I don't really, I'm not like a huge Ultron fan, uh, but, you know, it did set up the cool ending where it's like a uh, big guy, which is Hulk kind of just left, you know? Next up, we got Ant-Man. Now, Ant-Man is purely a comedy and your typical um, superhero movie. It didn't really do much for the MCU, in my opinion, but I liked it. So I'm going to put it in the C tier. It just because it's kind of like your typical um, Marvel movie or superhero movie in general. Civil War, man, this was when I really got into the MCU. This was like the big movie. I think this might have been the first MCU movie that I could vividly remember all the parts of. And I remember loving this movie so much. It was so cool. Before this, I had only seen Avengers, Guardians, and Avengers Age of Ultron. That's it. But then Civil War came out, and oh man, this was golden. I'm going to put this movie in the S tier, right above Spider-Man 2. As much as I love Spider-Man 2, Civil War is an insanely good movie. Um... Purely because, well, you know, actually, I'm not going to put it in uh, S tier. I'm going to put it right above. It almost made it because I do have, it's just not like purely golden. It is the second battle, I feel like, is a bit more underwhelming where, of course, uh, Cap wins against Iron Man. Nobody dies, but um, it was a really amazing movie. I thought it was a really cool movie, you know, um, it sets up so many storylines in the MCU. Um, we got Black Panther out of it. We got the continuation of ant Man story. We got, um, oh gosh, who else did we get? We got the setup of Infinity War and Endgame. Well, mostly Infinity War just kind of set the mood. We got the Tom Holland Spider-Verse or well, the Spider-Man trilogy that he got set up from that. It was just all around an amazing film. Great action, great story. We also got a lot of conflict with like Wanda being the Scarlet Witch. And then she kind of tries to go to the Wanda side and it kind of works in that movie, I guess. Next up, we got Homecoming. Homecoming is at best, you're like, honestly, I don't even know where to put this. I guess I'll put it under Iron Man 3. So, first of all, Michael Keaton is the villain. Really weird. If you've seen Batman with Michael Keaton, really weird. Second of all, the plot is pretty linear, thin. It's like a Disney Channel movie almost. And there's not really a big threat. I guess it was a cool way. It was fine for when it came out, I guess. It was just fine. They didn't do your typical Spider-Man origin story in it. It was just like um, Tom Holland is going to be kind of like Tony Stark, Iron Man, like kind of just like Tony Stark's little pet, I guess you could say. And he's always looking up to Tony like, Mr. Stark, what do we do? A lot. And uh, you see Iron Man in it, which is cool. We get to see Happy, a lot more Happy in it. Um, a lot more Happy, so yeah. I don't know, it's it's okay. Next up, we got Black Widow. So, when I looked this up, 
Black Widow came before Black Panther, but Black Widow was only released last year in like summer. This movie was delayed so many times, so many times, and I'm going to put it at C, right under Ant-Man. People would probably tell me, put it in the F tier, but no, the action in this movie is really cool. It sets up Yelena, and her character is really cool, more enjoyable than the Black Widow, in my opinion, um, and yeah. That's all I could really say about it. I mean, it was a really, it, it had potential and it was kind of funny, but it was a lame letdown, I think, of a movie that was very hyped up. Anyways, moving on now to Black Panther. Now, Black Panther, this is a movie that I don't understand why other people love it super much, but I will say it is better than ant-man on a pure story basis like the action and story is amazing rest in peace chadwick boseman it's really sad uh that he died he um he had a bright future ahead of him especially in marvel it is really sad uh but this movie will always be a memorable one for any mcu fans i think because with the more recent i mean not super super recent but his passing was pretty recent and um a lot of marvel fans love this movie and would probably put it in the s tier of marvel movies and i think why is because the story was really good the action was really good i think it was just like your next level superhero movie for me now it did set up a really amazing sequence in infinity war when they go to Wakanda and have the battle at Wakanda and Thor shows up with teenage Groot and Rocket and Thor has a Stormbreaker and then the all the Wakandan like Wakanda gets to fight Thanos's army man it's a cool scene in Infinity War and the characters that they got to set up in Black Panther movie were really cool uh it was one of the I think that was the first movie yeah that was the first Marvel movie I ever watched in the theater which was a lot to me so it's it's a pretty special movie for me I guess now Doctor Strange um I'm gonna go ahead and put this right under Black Widow it was not your typical Marvel movie but I'm putting it at the average because it tried doing something special and became a very long and drawn out superhero origin story in my opinion but hey dr strange is a huge part in the mcu nowadays <clears throat> okay thor ragnarok this is an s tier movie oh man this is this is actually better than spider-man 2 like <clears throat> we get to see hulk thor loki and valkyrie team up Valkyrie is new in this movie, gets introduced. Thor is just hilarious with Loki and Hulk. Hulk, you know, we get to see where he ends up. Jeff Goldblum becomes like this grandmaster of an arena type thing. It's an amazing movie. Absolutely. Like, I would recommend this to any Marvel fan. I think a lot of Marvel fans really, really love this movie because it's hilarious. Um, we get to see Thor and Loki's sister, which I never knew that they, they had a sister. Um, Thor gets his eye I think stabbed or cut and then he becomes like pirate he looks like a pirate kind of and it shows why or how the um hammer was destroyed and also it gets to show Odin for a bit I think it was like an illusion though um and also Doctor Strange shows up in it for like a good 10 like a good maybe five minute scene a really fun movie and a really cool adventure this was like the second yeah the second marvel movie i ever got to watch in the theater good stuff to go watch um now ant-man and the wasp i will put right under doctor strange it was an average movie it was funny but it was just average for me uh i don't really know what else to say it did open up the interesting idea that they play around with a bit in Ant-Man, which is uh, quantum, the quantum realm, 
which then, of course, is the big plot point in Endgame. Now, Avengers Infinity War. Man, this is a movie I will always remember. Um, this, for me, is better than Civil War. Infinity War, I would have put it in the S tier, but I'm going to put it at top of the A. But this movie, I only watched it once and I halfway fell asleep. I might have actually watched it twice, but like this was the big Marvel event. I remember years before this movie even came out, I thought it was so cool that an Avengers movie was not only going to have the Avengers, but going to have the Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, all these heroes. And back then I wasn't a huge Marvel fan when I saw the trailer. But I had watched the Guardians. I knew who Thor was. I think I had already watched Ragnarok. So I was just getting into Marvel. And this was a great movie to watch. And man, that ending was so surprising. And it it's a great movie to watch. It sets up so much for the MCU. There are events in this movie that will always be a topic of discussion among Marvel fans. And among the mcu characters themselves that will always be brought up um but man like i always remember as a kid being like i kind of want to see something new where the villains win and uh infinity war brought it to us but then endgame happened which is the greatest marvel movie of all time in my opinion nobody it's just the greatest Marvel movie ever. Man, Endgame is a three-hour extravaganza of an event. It is the coolest Marvel movie. It is, I'm pretty sure, the number one or number two highest grossing film. Like, anybody that watched a single Marvel movie, I'm pretty sure watched Endgame. Because when the spoilers started coming out, which spoiler alert, Iron Man and Cap die. Very sad. Oh, man. I watched this on a plane on the way to Disney World. And I got off the plane crying. And my parents were like, why are you crying? I'm like, we have to watch an Endgame. It's so sad. Anyways, man, dude, it was just really sad. Like that end scene. I'm going to go back and watch it probably this weekend, both Infinity War and Endgame. Because I really do think that they're amazing movies. Um, absolutely hilarious. Plays with the idea of time travel in the MCU. Which when I was watching it, I was like, wait, what now? What? You're telling me time travel in the MCU is going to be a thing? And they make, oh, uh, Ant-Man makes fun of it. I was like, oh, so you're telling me like, uh, Back to the Future, a bunch of crap. Uh, but it's a bunch of fun. It's a really fun movie. We get to see Gamora and Nebula a bit, a little bit of Thanos on his own side. Captain Marvel was really brought to life in this movie because Captain Marvel's movie had only come out, I think, like two or three months before this movie came out. And Dark Phoenix came out in the same year. This was a huge year for Disney, actually, 2019, before the pandemic. Um, But, you know, you get to see Iron Man, Cap, you get to see the avengers the ogs except oh yeah all of them all the originals alongside captain marvel ant-man and i think rocket was the only one from the guardians that was left at the time i can't remember there was like 12 superheroes i think or maybe just 10 that stayed together in the end but it's absolutely genius. Next up, we have Loki. So apparently Loki actually happens before WandaVision. Now, okay, I got my, I got my feelings on Loki. And I'm going to put it at the bottom of the A. No, actually, I'll put it above Guardians. Heck, I'll even, you know what, I'll put it right under Iron Man 2. Because what it does for the MCU is insane. We get to see Owen Wilson team up as Mobius team up with Loki and Sylvie and introduces variants, Kang the Conqueror perhaps, and the TVA. It it's pretty insane. It's a cool ride of a show. It's a different style from your typical Marvel show. And 
I think when the Disney Plus Marvel shows were coming out last year in 2021, people were kind of just like, wow, all these Marvel shows are very different. Like, for instance, it started with WandaVision, and that was so different, and people checked out of that show, but then came back a little bit later. I remember watching that every week and being like, oh, this is so cool. And then um, watching, I watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier really late, but then that happened, and it was just like your typical superhero movie. And then Loki happened, which was like insane. It was all about a lot of time travel and like a character study on Loki and it's the first Marvel show to be renewed for a season two and the the views on that show were insane for um Disney and Marvel here okay let's talk WandaVision for a bit um I'll put WandaVision directly over Guardians 2 now WandaVision would have been an S like tier but Honestly, it's only special the first time you watch it, in my opinion, because then you already know what's going to happen in the end. And it's like a really type of a mystery thing that I don't really have much to say. Oh, gosh. Okay, so uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is officially the worst thing in the MCU to ever happen, in my opinion. It is a total reboot of Captain America Winter Soldier, in my opinion, just with Falcon and then it becomes Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Um, it's a slow six hour movie. I watched it like back to back and I was just so disappointed. Such a disappointment. I don't really know what it did for the MCU to be honest. I was like losing consciousness as I was watching it. I was like, oh, this is so boring. Okay, Shang-Chi. That's gonna go right above Age Ultron. Easily the best MCU phase four movie yet. Actually, well, we got another movie to talk about, but that one actually might be better than Shang-Chi, but on a pure, like, story-driven basis, oh my gosh, Shang-Chi, 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 I don't know, Shang-Chi was amazing. Um, The trailers look cool, and I had just watched Mortal Kombat, and then I was watching, like, the trailers, I'm like, this looks like Mortal Kombat, but, like, for kids without a lot of gore and blood and man it was basically that um really cool stuff i mean we get a sequel teased in the same movie it's not even like like that's how confident marvel was about this movie and this movie did really good actually i think maybe not i don't know it might have kind of flown under the weather because phase four was really bad and this was like The only reason I'm putting it in B is the end act was a major disappointment in my opinion. They kind of just go to a village and then everything is like your typical superhero movie. Like, oh, yay, we beat the bad guy. And then uh, they, when the post credit scene, we get to see like Wong and Shang and his like friend who I'm pretty sure they're going to start dating in the next one, but whatever. We got like Wong, Shang-Chi and the girl meeting uh bruce banner and captain marvel on like these holograms and it's kind of just signaling to you in that post credits like hey the multiverse is open and these guys know about it so it's cool eternals who i got eternals you know what i'm actually gonna be generous it is better than the amazing spider-man 2 for one reason amazing concept and story but it was so terribly executed like this film drags on and on i'm pretty sure it's like two hours and 30 minutes or two hours and 45 goodness like okay the coolest thing about the movie honestly is seeing a new band of superheroes that we've never seen on the television or on the big screen but it's like 12 of them and they tried introducing 12 superheroes in such a short amount of time like they should have done this like infinity war and and game type of thing like oh big cliffhanger okay we'll introduce the others maybe like made this a trilogy of movies and just introduced a couple of turtles at the time uh the ending of this movie is pretty surprising the post credit scene is amazing like the first one oh man 
or no, sorry, not the first one. The first one I thought was stupid with Harry Styles coming in as the brother of Thanos. Absolutely stupid. It, that just tells me like, oh, we can have Dwayne Johnson or Kim Kardashian or Kanye West come into the MCU if you, we want. We'll just take the big name celebrities, Olivia Rodrigo, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, guys, this is just going to make the MCU stupid if you're just going to pull in all these big name stars. Because with Avengers, I really think they just kind of took a bunch of uh not so well-known actors at all and made them super famous that's how that's why like the mcu hasn't worked like for instance in guardians of the galaxy that was big for p or um chris pratt like that's a huge thing for him and then he got to do stuff like the lego movie and jurassic world which his role in jurassic world is insanely cool okay far from home um if I'm being honest, it's the bottom of C tier for me because it it's like an awkward romance thing for Tom and um, Zendaya's character, um, MJ, sorry. And Nick Fury's in it, kind of. The, the post credit scenes are weird, but uh, Nick Fury's in it and he plays a pretty cool role. The only stupid thing about this film is the fact that um mysterio it takes him like an hour to introduce mysterio as the villain um so that's stupid but yeah all right we're almost done guys we got four more to go no way home or sorry yes no way home no way home is crazy good but on a story perspective it is crazy stupidly bad but I'm going to put it right above Loki. Because for me, seeing all the Spider-Men together was really awesome. I'm sure a lot of, well, actually, I know a lot of like uh, Marvel fans who grow up of, like watching Toby or grew up watching Andrew's movies. They were like, whoa, this is so cool. Now, admittedly, they did nerf... Um, they kind of just crapped on Sandman, Electro, and um, Dr. Connors. Electro, not so much. Like, Electro has a cool suit. And, oh, man, that scene when he's talking to Andrew, like, man, why isn't there a black Spider-Man out there? Dude, only if Miles Morales walked through a portal would this movie be, like, the one of the, like, up for debate as the greatest Marvel movie now it's already a debate is this the greatest marvel movie because like it opened up the multiverse we got to see of course doc ock as you can see there with the tentacles just being able to have all those references to the old spider-man films and watching all the old spider-man films before the movie came out or well before i watched the movie i already had it spoiled and i'm like oh if toby and andrew are gonna be in it i gotta go watch these old movies so i bought it for 25 dollars all of toby's and all of andrew's Five movies for $25 is really good on Blu-ray. Like, that's $5 a film. And some amazing films. The only one I wish was like $1 was, you know, Spider-Man 3 over here. Um, anyways, I gotta go on. Huh? Okay, Hawkeye. Uh, a lot of people don't like Hawkeye, but <sighs> Hawkeye... You know what? A tier is getting a bit crowded, and some of these movies now, looking at them, I don't really think they're A tier worthy. But I'm actually going to put Hawkeye right um, under Shang-Chi. Um, really cool. It's your typical like superhero thing, except you get this tease, like kingpins in it. So it's like, oh, is, is Daredevil going to come to the MCU? Because if you remember No Way Home, um, even though Matt Murdock was there, Matt Murdock only knew Peter Parker, not Spider-Man. So yes, Matt Murdock is in the MCU, but the thing with Kingpin, and I saw a report about making a uh, costume for Daredevil and Kingpin in the my in the Echo Show. Anyways, and then the continuation of Yelena's character—it's it, all great. It really is. All right, Moon Knight. Okay, Moon Knight is easily S tier. 
right under Spider-Man 2. Now, if you ask a Moon Knight fan, what did you think of Moon Knight? They're going to tell you, I thought he was slow, and I wanted more Moon Knight. I can agree with them. I wanted more Moon Knight, but for me not being a Moon Knight fan and just reading a couple comics as the show went on, wow, like that was a fun show. A little bit psychological thriller, I guess you could say. Like it's a mystery and it's trippy. Literally one of the greatest acting performances I've ever seen. Oscar Isaac is an amazing actor and I really want to now go back and watch the Star Wars sequels just to watch him be Poe Dameron. Like I always, when I was watching the sequels, I thought, oh, Poe is so cool. But man, yeah, that was great. Um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Y- you know, after watching the X-Men and X2 and just thinking about the film, I have to say that it is actually a really amazing Marvel movie. It's going to go right here above No Way Home. Um, it, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. I'm going to um, pop off of this. But uh, yeah, that's that. Um, but Multiverse of Madness introduces the Illuminati in an alternate universe. Now, the Illuminati is not like the one that's on Earth um, here. It's a it's an elite force of uh, six superheroes. Wait, they had uh, spoilers for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. They had Doctor Strange, Professor X, um, Mister Fantastic, Captain Marvel, Captain Carter, and then of course Mordo. Mordo. So that's, yeah, six members. Man, like, honestly, it was creepy. It was really creepy. I got jump scared multiple times in the theater. And, oh, man, when Professor X came out, even though I hadn't watched the movie, just seeing Patrick Stewart and knowing how near and dear he was to everybody in the audience, like people, I remember when I watched the movie, some kid got out of his seat and was like, oh, no way, and just jumped out of his seat and like it was it was really awesome the same thing happened when like captain carter was there somebody was like like that same person was like what like oh that's cool and then when reed richards appeared they're like no way like no way and then when professor xavier got there dude jumped out of his seat like no way let's go and only if i had watched the x-men before the movie i would have had a way better reaction to the movie when i had walked out of the theater but putting it where i did on the uh tier list in the a tier i didn't like it when i walked out of the theater but thinking about it now more it is an interesting tactic that they went for in the marvel movie or in the mcu a horror type movie it plays around with the multiverse and it probably introduces us once dr strange gets his eye healed in number three Maybe he'll build an Illuminati and, you know, we saw Professor X in an alternate universe and we got to see John Krasinski play Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, which apparently he's been fan cast as Mr. Fantastic for a while now. And I've never even seen a Fantastic Four movie. I don't know much about the characters um, except for like their abilities, but Seeing him in the office and then seeing him in this movie is really like strange because it's like a huge time jump. Um, but he plays a really he plays his role pretty serious and pretty nice. Professor X is from the X Men TV show, like the cartoon, so it's all cool. Um, honestly, with the multiverse open, which we knew was already open when Loki started but we only have seen some of the potential of it in, um, uh, sorry. Like we only saw some potential of the multiverse in No Way Home and then a lot more in this movie. But if we ever get to see like Into the Spider-Verse Part 2, 
hopefully at the end like miles and gwen come to the real world through the multiverse like if they have a cartoon character which i guess they kind of did right here with x-men so i guess we're seeing like the full potential right now because we got to see like a cartoon character come to the live screen i mean literally professor x wasn't in a wheelchair he was in like the yellow wheelchair thingy looking car i don't even know what it is but yeah um i know a lot of people out there which spoilers for the x-men movies but and logan but in the movie logan it was spoiled for me that wolverine dies and that's really sad because watching the x-men i really do believe that wolverine is the most interesting character in the x-men movies but honestly if hugh jackman was like sure i'll come back as wolverine um first of all marvel would make millions of dollars even though logan was only releasing like 2017 i think or 2018 um you know for fans that's kind of a while because they like to see their heroes live on and on and on i really think with the possibility well the actually the confirming of secret wars being the next big like infinity war i mean guys we could probably see robert downey jr come back as iron man steve rogers um or chris evans come back as cap and probably even hugh jackman as wolverine if they wanted to introduce the x-men before that movie oh man like the possibilities of secret wars are and is endless it's insane what marvel is doing and i'm becoming a very big fan of marvel um today we got confirmation news that on august 17th let me check real quick but we got she hulk news which you know um hey i hope that we get to see daredevil i don't know a lot about daredevil all i know is he's pretty cool um yes august 17th and we know that she hulk is a lawyer and daredevil is a lawyer maybe we can see um matt murdoch team up with whoever she hulk is by day or like not in her superhero form and then of course she hulk team up with daredevil but i'm gonna end it i think this podcast has probably gone on for 50 plus minutes and it's going to take a while to upload this to Spotify. <laughs> but uh, hey, stay tuned for Friday. We will be having an Attack of the Clones episode. And then guys, it's right there. You guys know I'm a huge Mar- or Marvel fan, but also a huge Star Wars fan. May 25th, we were going to get... Um, we were going to get Kenobi. But I'm actually not going to do a Clone Wars episode of Micro 2D. I might actually, maybe, maybe, this is a very small maybe, that I will do it like on Saturday or Monday or something. But on Wednesday, you can expect to be seeing a um, a Revenge of the Sith review. Hopefully me and Isaiah can do that or somebody else. But yeah, guys, Kenobi's right there and... You guys know I also like Star Wars Theory, and this is the last thing I'll say before I go, but I'm going to read off the Nerd Theory podcast title, and uh, I'm going to check it out today, but hey, it got me super hyped up, like I was, I was in class and I saw the notification and I'm telling my brother, like, let's go, because I played um, Jedi Fallen Order, which if nobody has played that game and they're a Star Wars fan, or even not a Star Wars fan, but they like even just an average fan but they like um maybe like um i don't know i forgot what my train thought if you like assassin's creed but you like lightsabers um get fallen order but nerd theory part four this is the one i'm reading off anakin knows cal Kiestis. Fallen Order in Kenobi and other Star Wars news. Guys, we could see Cal Kiestis. And I really thought to myself, dude, this is 10 years after Order 66. Cal is right about that age. Maybe a little bit older or a little bit younger from the game. 
I'm pretty sure Fallen Order like takes place, but dude, I love that game. It brought me a lot of fun memories, and I remember playing it in summertime, and I'm just waiting on game two. Um, so EA, if you're out there, um, make the game good, and then take my money, because I will be ready to pay for it. But that's all, guys. See you on Friday, and I hope you enjoyed that MCU tier list. Peace.